This video is entitled Semantics and Phrasing and is a companion piece to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS. Chapter 3. I'm James Zimbrano, PhD, and I'll be taking you through this video presentation. In this video, we're going to cover several of the semantic tags that deal with flow or how a page is organized. We're going to talk about the header, the main, and the footer tags. We're going to talk about the nav tag. We're going to talk about the section, article, and the side tags, um, and how they all fit together to, uh, to, to form the structure of a, of a, properly, of, of a proper website, proper web page. So let's define what flow and flow elements really do. Flow elements are used to divide the page itself into logical groups and then some of those logical groups into sublogical groups. Flow tags also tell the browser what type of content is in each of the group. Is it a header? Is it a footer? Is it um, some flow elements can be nested inside of others and some you probably shouldn't, but uh, um, you'll see how we want you to do that. And then uh, we're going to talk about how it's not proper to put a paragraph inside of a, another paragraph. It just doesn't quite make sense. Or a, uh, a paragraph inside of a header or a header inside of a paragraph. Because that kind of breaks the whole idea of this semantic packaging of this wrapping things up into these nice pretty modules and pieces and elements. The first three semantic elements that I want to talk about are the header, the footer, and then the main semantic element. Now, these elements go directly inside the body. The body could be thought of as broken up into three sections, the header section, the footer section, and the main section in the middle. Um, and they go directly in the body. Nothing else, just directly in the body, and then tags go inside of these three sections. If you've got a page header, something up top, a menu bar, or a title bar, or logos, or something like that, put them in the header section. Put them in the header a flow tag. If you've got a copyright message, or a privacy policy, or contact information on the bottom of the page, that really belongs in a footer down at the bottom of the page. And then you can optionally put the rest of the page in the middle between the header and the footer. And if you want to wrap that into a package, you can create a main package and then put all of your page there in the main that's in the middle. There's another element that you'll use quite a lot, and that is the element called nav, the nav element. Now, the nav element is where we put groups of anchors or links to other HTML documents. You've not seen those yet, but you will see those in the next chapter, chapter four, anchors and URLs. But just think of the nav as a, as a the nav tag contains menus and navigation of around a page or between pages. The next two HTML uh, uh, flow tags that I want to talk about are the section and the article. So if you have a body, uh, a, a page that has multiple sections, you've got multiple things going on within a within a single main, you can put them in sections and, and give each section an ID and treat each section differently for style. And then a section could contain an article or many articles, or the main can contain many articles. Now, an article always starts with a heading, H1 through H6, and then paragraphs and images within that article. So you can think of a page as containing a header, a main, a footing, a footer. A, um, a main can contain multiple sections. A section can contain multiple articles, and an article contains a heading and must contain one heading and several paragraphs. So if you uh, were creating book chapters, you could create those as separate articles within a section. And the last semantic tag that I wanted to discuss is the aside. Now the aside is typically in a section or an article. Um, it can contain either text or an image. 
And it's not in the flow, but directly related. And you can, you, when you look at a magazine or a newspaper, you'll often see a little box off to the side with a quote from the article, or you'll see a little box off to one side with maybe a picture in it um, that's not directly part of the text, but uh, related and and important and, and needs to be there. So um, that's what we use an aside tag for. You can see how these tags tell the computer, tell the browser, um, and tell the search engines what this text means. It's not just how it's arranged. It describes how things, what things really, really mean. Now, this HTML example page is too big to fit all on one slide, so I'm going to talk about the first half of the page and then the second half of the page. You can see how our body has been divided up into the header, and you can see that the header has H1 inside it, so that says that that's the main header of the body, that main header of the page. You can then see that I have a section and a section then has an H2 that's called Stories. And then Stories contains multiple articles. And the first story is a story about foo. And you can see it has a heading and a paragraph within that first article. And then we see that uh, as we continue down the HTML page, that there's a second article, a story about a bar. And... Um, you can see how that article contains the heading in two paragraphs, closes that article. Then we close the section. I could have put a main around that whole thing, but because it was all one section, I, I didn't feel it was really necessary, but it would have been okay to be there. And then you can see there's the footer with a paragraph that contains um, a, a, a message, and it contains a link, an anchor. We'll talk about details of what an anchor is next chapter, but you can kind of catch the semantic flow of that whole page. And it looks like this once it's rendered. And you can see that the heading is up at the top, or the header up at the top, the footer at the bottom. You can see the two articles within the main section. Um, really, it looks like a nice page. Now, you could have done it without all those semantic tags, just with paragraphs and H1s, and, and that's all. But um, it means so much more when we use all those semantic tags, and I really want to see you use them. This concludes this video, um, video 2, or video 3A. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James Zimrano, Ph.D. You can contact me at jim at renejm.com. Remember, this work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial share-alike 4.0 international license, and I'd like to say thank you for watching.